Welcome to The Strategic Marketer, where we talk about strategies, tactics, and practical steps to help you become a more strategic marketer. I'm your host, Joseph Lewin, and today's guest is Kurt Anderson. Kurt is the founder of B2B Tail. He's the e-commerce guy for manufacturers and author of the book, Stop Being the Best Kept Secret. In today's conversation, Kurt and I discuss whether or not B2B companies should invest in e-commerce. So without further ado, let's learn from Kurt. Kurt, thank you so much for joining the podcast today. Really appreciate it. Absolutely, Joseph. What an absolute honor and privilege to be with you today. Thank you and super excited to have this conversation with you. Yeah, so I know that you focus a lot on the the manufacturing side of things and and e-commerce. So is e-commerce something that's only for business to consumer products and commodity products, or is it something that... Uh, B2B service companies and manufacturers can benefit from? Well, Joseph, phenomenal question. And maybe you and I together, we can work on dispelling that myth, right? And I I think, you know, thanks, not thanks, but due to COVID, uh, that perception has changed dramatically. It's not there 100%. Uh, I think pre-COVID, there was a lot of that myth of like, hey, I'm a custom manufacturer or I'm in the B2B space. You know, e-commerce isn't for me. It's something that uh, myself, my wife, we go on Amazon, buy our consumer goods, UPS is at our door every day type of thing. But there are incredible, enormous B2B opportunities on, e- you know, within e-commerce. And I know, um, you know, we could dig deep into, you know, a lot of different aspects. Uh, I know, you know, you're an expert on the B2B side with, you know, we, you and I talk about configurators and what have you. Right. Um, you know, so there's, there's, uh, you know, we could take a deep dive if you want to go there on, you know, some of those opportunities for, uh, manufacturers or folks in a B2B industrial space for e-commerce. Yeah. I mean, and like you're mentioning, the company I work for is in the, uh, we work with engineers and, yep. Um, industrial marketers, so people who market components. So that's kind of how we connect it is uh, we're kind of in the in the same space. And yeah. in the manufacturing world, especially, there's a lot of custom products or at least products that manufacturers think are so custom that they couldn't have e-commerce for. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I mean, basically in the B2B world, if there's anybody that wouldn't be able to do e-commerce, it would be some of these manufacturing companies and yeah. uh, so maybe you could speak to that a little bit of how some of these yeah. manufacturers are are changing the game. Absolutely. So, you know, a b- bunch of points right there. And I'm so biased. It's really, it's hard for me to find, <laughs> to think of a company, a product, a service that is not applicable to e-commerce in some capacity. I mean, like, I would love the challenge of like, hey, you know, you're right, that one isn't, but it's hard to think of one. You know, uh, if you if you know, if you're familiar with Brian Beck, he would be an awesome guest for you sometime. He wrote a book called Billion Dollar B2B E-Commerce. And mm-hmm. he gives uh, specific examples on six-figure, even seven-figure industrial products that are being sold on e-commerce. You know, so like, you know, we've had client. we do uh, what what myself and my, our team do. We do uh, training, e-commerce training for manufacturers. And we have folks who are like, oh, well, we sell five-figure products, you know, so on and so forth. We're like, go on Amazon, go on Zorro, go on Granger, and you're going to see these, you know, four or five, six-figure products, you know, being sold on e-commerce, you know. Wow. And you mentioned, you know, uh, you know, I've had the honor of, uh, you know, contact Joseph if you want a killer demo. I've gone through a couple of demos with you, uh, with Andrew Hood on your team, and you guys, you know, 3D CAD drawings and you know all sorts of super fun, exciting pro- uh, opportunities for custom manufacturers. We're like, no, we need a drawing, and everything's customized. Blah blah blah. You know, e-commerce right. opens the door for so many. So many value uh, propositions and benefits for those B two B folks in the B two B space. Yeah, so maybe you could give me an example of a product that yeah. a customer thought could never be sold in e commerce that you've helped yeah. them get online and they've seen success. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, um, I'll give you, I could give you several. You know, so so again, think of that custom manufacturer, and and the challenge is they're like, you know, well, we bend metal, we cut steel, we fabricate something, we make three D. You know, cir- uh, you know, we make circuit boards, we 3D print something, you know, so it's very broad. And so the challenge is from, a, you know, your marketing guru, from a marketing standpoint, this probably music to yours, you know, f- big takeaway for today, man, niche down, niche down, niche down. 
You know, so many manufacturers are like, you know, uh, well, we're a CNC shop. Well, we want to come up on Google for CNC. I'm like, dude, like, it's just a little too <laughs> broad, man. You know, <laughs> like, if you want to come up on first page for CNC or five fabricate metal, I'm like, I, you know, if you guys can see me, if you can't, you know, I say, if you want to come up on first page for like CNC, you have a better chance of seeing me with hair. Like, it's just not going to yeah. happen, right? <laughs> yeah, you're so, quite and, and, and if, the, if you're listening to this on audio, I have no hair. So <laughs> it's, um, you know, you want to get, you want to really niche down. And what that does, it helps you speak the right language to the right buyer. It helps with your keyword strategy. A lot of manufacturers and folks in a B2B space, that's new to them. Like, hey, what's this keyword strategy? It's your core strength. So I'll give you a, a couple quick. Well, wait, I just want to stop you right there real quick. Yeah, and then I want to hear your examples. Yeah. Um, just to put an asterisk on that. I want to highlight what you just said, because if I yeah. could say anything, you know, especially if it's a small business, but really any business, you, you've got to find find that niche and and focus on it. And yeah. the the more specific that you can be, the better it is for marketing. Like yeah. if you if you want to have a huge sales team where your sales team has to work super hard and have twenty five meetings a piece before they land a deal, you know, be my guest. But if you want people to come to you who already know <laughs> what right. you do, and when they get on the phone with your sales team or on a demo, they already are ready to buy. They just kind of need a couple questions answered. Yeah. The, yeah. Then you have to get your messaging right. And you can only do that if you, if you niche down and, and yeah. find the right audience. Absolutely. You know, and when we were, uh, before we jumped on, you were sharing your, you know, your musical talents and aspirations. It's like, you have to sing the right song to the right audience. You know what I mean? And so the thing is, uh, you know, as you niche down, you know, there's a phenomenal book and I know I'm digressing, getting away from our example. I'll give, you know, there's a phenomenal book that came out, uh, I believe in the nineties was called E-Myth. E-Myth is, boy, if you haven't read E-Myth, it was just, a, it was a game changer for me, written by an author, Michael Gerber, uh, blockbuster, international top seller. Anytime you see like a yeah, small amazing book. book. Yeah, you, you, you know it, right? Phenomenal book. And gosh, I caught Michael Gerber on a podcast two weeks ago, man. He was on Entrepreneurs on Fire. I'm like, man, I haven't heard or seen Michael Gerber in years. And man, he came on and he has just as much fire as he did 20 years ago. And he dropped a bombshell I want to share with you. And I think it'll resonate with you, Joseph. He said, you need to niche down till it hurts. Hmm. I'm like, just let that resonate for a second. Niche down till it hurts. And like, you know, and I put, and I do a lot of webinars and, and uh, workshops and training. And somebody said, like, what does that mean? You know, it hurts when you, when you have to turn, turn away a customer that's really not a good fit for you and would have taken you in a bad direction anyway, yeah. that you yeah. probably, they would have been frustrated. You would have been frustrated. So again, with your e-commerce strategy, what, here's what I love to preach. And then I'll get into that example, Joseph. And I'd love to hear your comment, you know, comment, um, uh, on that. You know, I always preach, how can you help that ideal buyer make a buying decision on a Friday night at midnight without having to wait for you to open up your door on a Monday morning? That mm -hmm. gives such an incredible competitive advantage. You know, there's a stat out there, 70% of buying decisions, especially in a B2B space, are made before they ever pick up the phone or shoot an email. They're digressing, or they're, I'm sorry, they're digesting and absorbing all the information you have on your website, your LinkedIn profile, how-to videos, and if you don't have any of those things, or 3D uh, configurator that you guys offer, if you don't have these tools, you are just giving yourself a total disadvantage. What What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. And we've really seen, so we have two products. We have an engineering software and then our product configurators, which are I won't go into too much detail right yeah. now, but they help component manufacturers uh, yep. increase sales qualified leads. Um, so on the engineering product, it's an enterprise software. And yep. um, I mean, P&G is one of our customers. So we have some enterprise customers, you know, with, yeah, that, sure. with that product. It's complicated. It's It can be really complicated to sell it, to to figure it out. But we really worked over the last year at clarifying our message and focusing on the core strength because it can do a lot of things. And before yeah. it was like, here's all the things it could do and would be in a demo and it'd be like an hour going into an hour and a half of like talking about all the features, trying to convince yeah. people. Yeah. So we simplified it way down to focus on our strength, core strength, which is 3D shape search. And we've, we've written some articles that are getting people to come in on that term. Yeah. And it's not a lot, you know, it's maybe yep. 10 to 20 searches a month for that topic. Uh, but then we put all of the information up front online where they can understand the product, what it does, they can read through all these materials, and then yep. they can self-service a, a 20 minute demo 
yep. that we pre-recorded where they get to see the software themselves before yep. they talk to our sales guy. And then when they get on with our sales guy, we have them, uh, the end, the call to action is for them to sign an NDA. And then we right. show them how this works on their own parts. And doing that, um, we've now closed multiple customers in under 90 days. And we just closed one in under 30 days from the time they hit our website, from the time they basically heard about us yes. to paying us, like to yeah. having a pay, yeah. paid order. Um, of course, before it was 18 to 24 months. So that can only happen if you focus on your messaging, you you narrow it down, and then you give right. as much information up front. Because if that doesn't happen, then they engage other uh, other competitors. And yep. then it turns into an 18 to 24 month process where they have to yep. go through all these different stages. But you can yep. short circuit all that if you get them up front and you win them over before they go to market with everybody else. Dude, drop that expensive mic that you have right now, man. That's just absolutely awesome, right? I mean, like, just, man, just like soak in what you just said. You know, like, you put all that information out there. You're making it easier to buy from you, you know? Like, you're not trying to sell them. You're making it easier to do business with you. Putting all that information, showing all the incredible benefits and value of how their business is going to improve by engaging with this powerful solution that you guys deliver. I mean, that yeah. that is just so, that's juicy right there, Joseph. That's just great information, great example. And Absolutely it serves the it. customer. You know, in the end of the day. It just they, serves the customer, right. They get to, they have the information they need to make the best decision in the shortest amount of time possible, which right. serves which serves everybody in the end of the day. This week's episode of The Strategic Marketer is brought to you by the Brand Compass course. If you're looking to take your marketing services side hustle to the next level, the Brand Compass course is for you. In the course, you're going to learn how to identify your ideal customers and narrow down to serve a niche market. Then you're gonna learn how to productize your offering so that it's easier for customers to understand exactly what you do for them. And then you're gonna put all of this information into a one page messaging guide. That way you can use your customer's language to speak exactly to their pain points and problems every single time. Check out the show notes for a link to the course. Yeah, let's dive into those. E yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we'll, we'll quit. I, I know we're <laughs> like, we'll be here all day, right? So, uh, so, KYC, right? And that just kind of confirms, reaffirms what you just said. Know your customer, know your customer, know your customer. You know, like, again, you try to be everything to everybody. We find that constantly, you know, I bend metal. Who do you bend metal for? Ah, we can do it for anybody. You know, we can do circuit boards for anybody. Really? You know, but then when you niche down and you talk to them, like, you know, here's a space that they're in. So example, I'll give you, there was custom manufacturer. They did like wire harnesses, that type of thing. Well, we found out they make, they manufacture this little goofy product. It's called a ground strap. And a ground strap is a little device that goes in anything that draws a current needs to be grounded. Why? Otherwise, if you you might look like me, right? Just you 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 have that electrical shock. So it's a multi right. multi billion dollar industry. Everything that draws a current needs to be grounded. Your appliances, your car, your computers we're staring at right now, everything needs to be grounded. It is a massive massive market. So this company that I use for an example with this little tiny ground strap. They were making thousands and thousands of ground straps every month for one customer in the auto space. That was it. They had the machinery, the equipment, the skill set, raw material, knowledge, they had everything in place to scale that product. What was the problem? They were the best kept secret. So just for a shameless little plug, I have a book. It's called Stop mm. Being the Best Kept Secret. So we just sat there and we're like, hey, is there anybody, this is a multi-billion dollar market. Everything on the planet that draws a current needs to be grounded. Is there a chance? that somebody else on this, on this planet would need our little goofy tiny ground straps because we're selling and making thousands of them and we do it really well and they're very profitable. So we're like, hey, let's put them online. Let's just like, just, let's just take a shot. And you said, you know, uh, you know, what's the risk? Our risk was we created, we were already on WordPress. We took WooCommerce, which is the e-commerce plugin and it costs what? Zero. E mm -hmm. Woo Woo WordPress is free. WooCommerce is, free. you know, the plugin is free. It didn't cost us a thing. Our chance was like, hey, if nobody likes it, so be it. We'll take it down. We never even put anything in pro in, in place and in, in, in stock. Oh wow! We put it online, started marketing it. Well, all of a sudden, somebody knocks on our door. Somebody knocks on our door. All of a sudden, we get an order from Boeing. Like, hey, wait a minute. 
Boeing just like <laughs> went on our website, <laughs> took out a credit card, took out not a purchase order, took out a credit card, bought our little tiny goofy ground straps. So then, so we had a we had a list of products. Well, people were like, "Hey, we like the product that we ha- yeah, love the prices, love the product, but I need a different size. I need a different length, a different width, a different terminal on the end. I need a different configuration." So what we did is we created this little tiny simple configurator. What's a configurator? It's just like the shirt that's on your back right now. Hey, I want to create a new shirt. I need a uh, extra large. I want it in blue, and I want it to say "Manufacturing is awesome." Right. And I can make that shirt. I could go on a website and make that. We're just configuring the t shirt. Well, what we did, we created this little configurator, just like you're talking with your products or your, with your software. And so now a, an engineer could come on the website and they could create their own little ground strap. We've had Lockheed Martin, Virgin Hyperloop, wow. uh, Department of Defense. We've had different uh, military aspects. Mo- uh, Ford just sent in an RFQ for 90,000 pieces. So, I mean, it's just been uh, SpaceX. So this is a little tiny hole-in-the-wall 30-person custom manufacturer. They're called Falconer Electronics, found in 1985. And by, you know, again, they were trying to be everything to everybody. They were nothing to no one online. By niching down, and if you do a Google search, Joseph, for ground straps, they are they have the number one top position. So it's not they're not on first wow. page Google. They have the Google snippet. They're above Amazon. They're above AutoZone, O'Reilly Auto Parts. So they're going against Fastenal, MC, uh, MSC, Granger. They have the number one top position because they want to they niche down till it hurt found that one product that they want to own and it's a massive market. And so now they're just really just attacking that market with everything they have to be the best in that one category. And it's, it's going exceptionally well for them. Yeah, that is an an incredible example. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I'd love to keep going through examples, but maybe, maybe, um, Let's keep rolling because we'll be here yeah. all day. We could literally yeah, I know. Probably chat for five hours. <laughs> I, I love that though. So what do you think is holding B2B companies back from embracing any commerce strategy? You know, that's an awesome strategy or I'm sorry, awesome question. And the I think my answer to that is, uh, so I do, as I mentioned, I do a lot of webinars, workshops, and I've incorporated this new piece into my webinars. I call it, you know what? Customers are just between us, Joseph. They're just not that smart. You know, I'm always the dumb consumer, man. Every time I I call the credit card company or I call somebody, I walk into a store, hey, can I win the dumb customer of the of the day award? Because like I'm going to ask you a really <laughs> dumb customer. So like whatever product you sell, whatever uh, service that you deliver, whatever uh, solution that you offer, you have information that the other person doesn't. That's why I'm willing to mm. compensate you. I'm willing to pay you. Your, your customers, that ideal customer is willing to pay you for your service because you have information or you possess something that the other person doesn't, right? That's what, how we can exist or that's how we build a business by earning that trust. So the big thing is what I found is like customers, man, nobody wants to be made feel like a fool, right? Joseph, as guys, no. do you like asking for directions? No. I <laughs> hate asking for directions. It's just delicate, you know, for as dudes, we have these delicate, fragile egos. I'd rather drive around aimlessly than like have to stop and, ask, you know, thankfully. And I'm bad we at have directions our, on top of it. So <laughs> it's a real thankfully big we have our theory and we have, you know, all sorts of help now. But for guys, we're notorious. We don't, because we don't want to be look like the fool, right? Yeah. I find my, in my humble opinion, I feel Companies are resistant to change because either there's a culture or a fear of making that mistake. And Mm -hmm. so the thing is, if it's a larger company and I raise my hand and I'm a huge advocate for like, we need to do this. We need to take on this new technology. We need to do 3D configurators or we need to do what if it doesn't work? What if we laid out thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars? and, And I encounter that all the time. Man, we laid out $50,000 for pay-per-click marketing and we ended up with zero. Now what do we do? That money's gone. Can't get it back. We laid out $100,000 for a website and it's a disaster. We have to start from scratch. You know, people don't want to make that mistake where I love like the example I gave you with e-commerce that the example I just gave you. I mean, that company had like maybe a handful of thousands of dollars laid into that example. If it was a total dud, man, they were out of, you know what? We figured out what didn't work. Let's move on to the next one. So I think if people could create an environment of, hey, let's change, let's take chances, let's take calculated risks without, you know, like jeopardizing ourselves, 
But I think if you could create an environment to allow your team, your staff, if you're the owner or if you're this on staff, you know, how can you be the cheerleader to create that environment for change? And I think that would welcome more e-commerce opportunities. Strategic Marketer is brought to you in part by Thrive Themes. Thrive Themes is a killer visual WordPress editor. They've also recently launched editable themes so that you can edit every element of your WordPress theme. You can create amazing landing pages that are beautiful and conversion focused. They've built all of their products around helping you convert more leads into customers. You can find out more about Thrive Themes by clicking the link in the show notes. Yeah, and just a, another follow up on that. I feel like with something like e-commerce, it's it's a mindset change. It's a kind of a mm-hmm. paradigm shift for yes. people who are assuming that because they're in the B2B space or because they have expensive mm-hmm. products or because they customize or because they have some custom service, whatever the case would be, I think there's an assumption that well e-commerce just wouldn't work for our business, right. you know, and right. I think it, <laughs> especially as having been an entrepreneur in the past, it's just the most frustrating thing to hear where people go, oh, that's just not, you know, it's just not yeah. for me. It's such a like closed, closed minded way to look at things. But on the flip side, I've also been approached by tons of people trying to sell me stuff. And yeah. and so you do as the buyer, you kind of do have that guard that automatically goes up. Like, I don't want to waste my time looking yep. into something that's clearly not going to be a fit. Um, yep. So how do you, how do you feel like companies can start to make some of those um, mindset shifts that need to happen. Yeah. Uh, great question. In, you know, um, you know, I'm going to talk, you know, maybe I'll talk a little bit broad and get in, in, into a detail, you know, so, you know, again, creating that environment of trust and faith and, and the big thing is, you know, in our training, we kid around. So everybody's familiar with the SWOT analysis, you know, S W O T sweat strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I always kid around like, Hey man, we're in utopia. We're you're in your happy place. We have no weaknesses. We have no threats. Let's just focus on our strengths and our opportunities. And so again, by niching down, staying in that lane of what you're absolutely best at. And what I encourage manufacturers, especially those custom, if there's any custom manufacturers out there saying like, hey man, wait a minute, you know, I'm a custom manufacturer. I'm left out of this e-commerce party. Man, you are totally, as a matter of fact, I would argue if you are a custom manufacturer, your e-commerce opportunities are much better because your B2B distributor friends are selling commodities. Hmm. And when you think about that, you're customizing, you have an advantage. And man, I would love to talk to you, you know, like how... There's just so much opportunity for custom manufacturers. So taking a step back and like take one or two, I'm a big baseball fan. So take like your, you know, if I always use the analogy, like take some of your singles. If you have customers that are your singles, maybe your home run or whatever we could, or another way to look at it, take your 80, 20 rule. Okay. What 20% of your products are driving 80% of your, of your profits. If you laser focus at a couple of your top customers, whether single, double, triple home run, and you look at the 20% that drives the 80%, start Googling some different search, do different searches on that product line, see where the comp- what the competition looks like, see what other websites look like, talk to your, your ideal customers, those singles, those doubles, ask them, how could I make your life easier? Mm. Okay. It's just, a, you know, like who doesn't want, you know, Joseph, you call me up and said, Kurt, how can I make your life better? How can I make your business better? How could I help you get a promotion? How could I help you profit more? Dude, I'm with you all day, right? If you ask those questions, your ideal customer will tell you, we don't mm. have to guess. They'll tell you what you need, right? And you guys are doing an amazing job. And again, I just really admire, you know, your company and what you guys are working on, on how can you deliver that? So, so again, so I'll wrap up on that. Create that environment of trust. Take those, you know, take calculated risks. Niche down till it hurts. Exploit and look at those opportunities. And Google will tell you what opportunities are out there. Mm. You know, time and time again, when I'm with a manufacturer, I, I, and, I'll, and I'll stop on this. I call it, if you do a Google search for like your keyword, you know, uh, plastic injection molding for turbine engines. Okay. Something like a nice, long, rich, not just CNC, but CNC for who you solve a problem for. 
Yeah. And you look on that Google page and if on that page there are no videos, there are no pictures, there are no images, you see like maybe a blog post from 2011, I call it that's Google 2005. You have an incredible opportunity to get on that first page of Google and start stop being a best kept secret with that product. Yeah, I love that. And it's not like you're saying it's not just the manufacturing world either. I mean, it, when you're talking about customizing to the point where you could have e-commerce, it can apply to B2B services. It can apply to, to SaaS companies. It's yep. just a matter of pro, like thinking in terms instead of saying, well, we have to customize everything. You, you don't always have to customize things. You're making right. an assumption and you're coming right. in with an assumption rather than coming in and saying, let's do e-commerce. How are we going to make it work? And that, that might be just having a, a splinter offer, something really small yeah. that gets gets the person in the door. And so maybe that's some kind of a workshop or a you know, some kind of a um an assessment or something that you could actually turn into a product that you sell on your website. And yeah. if you have trouble beating out the competition, the 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 best thing you can do is make that person a customer while they're still in the research phase. And if they yeah. paid you money. Even if it's $5, they are a customer and they're going right. to trust you more and they're going to be more likely to work with you just because they spent $5 with you compared to having just read something about you. And so um, taking those, that concept of the long tail keywords in your service space, you know, if, if you're a marketing agency and you're trying to sell to other companies, it's right. the same idea. If you're saying we market custom products to everybody, it's like, good luck. But if you're a marketing agency that works with manufacturing companies to help them get e-commerce online, all of a sudden <laughs> you have a specialty and you're able right. to uh, get way more attention that way. At, oh my God, I couldn't love what you just said more. You know, and here, and I want to recap what you just said. Think about this, guys. If you're with your business, so many, you know, especially like I'm a digital immigrant, you know, if you were born before 1980, I was born way before 1980. We're all, you know, Gen X, baby boomers, we're digital immigrants. So we're trying to play catch up with millennials now and try to figure out this whole e-commerce digital world. Break down the barrier and to reduce the overwhelm. I think that's another, you know, that should have been another answer to your question previously. Mm -hmm. How can we reduce the overwhelm? And I love what you just said. If you focus on your solution, okay, pretend it's, the year 1900, you know, like that, uh, this whole internet thing doesn't even exist. Focus on your solution first and then figure out, okay, how can we do this digitally? I think so many times mm -hmm. what I find uh, my, my generation, this digital immigrant de de uh, de uh, demographic where they struggle is they get so caught up in the technology and like overwhelmed and intimidated that they kind of shut down. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. Where what you just said, you know, focus on the solution. And like, have that conversation with your team, have that conversation with a customer. And when you die, then, then pull in a Joseph, pull in subject matter experts, like, Hey, this is what my customer is telling me. How can I apply this as affordably as possible on our website or in a digital aspect? Or like you said, you know, uh, when I go through that buyer's journey with you guys, I know like we're on like our 15th date by the time I ever pick up the phone or even call you because you have just put all your information out there. That Absolutely. doesn't, and what does that cost to do? You know what I mean? It's Absolutely. so scalable what you guys are, are doing. And, and instead of like doing that heavy lift time and time and time again with each customer individually, you do it once and it's actually more effective for you guys. It's more affordable for you guys. So many people are like, hey, we, we don't have time to do that. How do you not, you know, how can you not have time? Look at the benefit and the efficiency that you just created, right? Yeah. I mean, and, and going back to that point um, with you do invest time up front in, in getting information up front and being transparent. Right. It does take a lot of time, right. but you can have a much, you know, you can keep your same smaller sales team yeah. and do two or three or four times as much business because your website's doing the heavy lifting of, uh, and then your sales team is there to support your customers. Right. And then right. their focus, instead of being on how do we make 400 dials, you know, this week and yeah. how do yeah. we spam people with an incredible amount of outbound emails that nobody cares about, yeah. you know, instead of their focus being on that, their focus can be on serving the customer and making sure they're right. giving the best experience for the customer. And then as you do that, 
you get more orders, you get more searches, you get more site traffic, and then you know it, it just multiplies. But when everything's out there online and then the customers coming to you are already educated, it makes your sales team so much more effective in the long run. Oh, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And it's just, and, and it's back to that mindset shift. We're at full capacity. Who has time to do that? However, I'm, because I'm so busy, you know, filling out RFQs and I'm so busy, you know, uh, prospecting and I'm so busy uh, having to do that demo. We're like, if we just stopped, called a timeout and did that information like you guys have done, you know, it's just, it, you know, you're putting that customer service, you're leaning on your website, you're maximizing your website. Another awesome potential guest for you, Joseph, Greg Mishu. Greg Mishu is the owner, founder of Windbound in Madison, Wisconsin. He calls it the digital twin. And how in Mar and I know the digital twin has been around for 20 years or so. He has a great spin on it. And from a marketing standpoint, how can you create your digital twin? exactly what you guys have done and put that on your website, put that yeah, actually, web presence out there. Yep. Greg, uh, I had him on and I'm releasing his podcast this upcoming week that. Oh, how funny, this, man. <laughs> how, I didn't, I didn't, I honestly didn't know week. that. I was going to say like, he would be perfect for you. I think it's episode 15, maybe. So go back. Oh, and that's, do it. that's fantastic. Well, kudos <laughs> to you. you have awesome. good, yeah. That was good, good, good timing, right? Awesome. Yeah. Cool. I mean, we could keep going all day. So I want to just yep. wrap up here with, you sure. kind of touched on a little bit, but, um, let's put a bow on it with what are some, you know, there's a B2B marketer that says, man, I want to do this. I want to help change the mind of my, my leadership. Yep. Um, and then, but I don't want to like destroy my career. <laughs> I don't yeah. want yeah, yes. to recommend some, you know, $250,000 e-commerce setup and then, right. you know, not have anybody show up. So yeah, what yeah. are some practical steps to test an e-commerce platform without breaking the bank and taking a huge career risk? Yeah, there are so, I mean, my goodness, there, you know, there's so much, uh, you know, I know we call it noise, you know, between podcasts, webinars, uh, I'm, I have the honor and privilege. I do a lot of workshops and uh, tie in with a lot of MEPs. MEPs are the Manufacturing Extension Partnerships. There's one in all 50 states. There is one near you. Uh, incredible resource. If you're in the B2B, you don't have to be a manufacturer if you're in the B2B space. If you're an entrepreneur, there's a small business development centers. There's nearly a thousand small business development centers around the United States. They are always parked at a university or a college. Their services are completely free, always free, mm -hmm. confidential. They're not just helping startups. They help companies that have been around for, I, uh, I used to be an SBDC advisor years ago. I had a client that was founded in 1815, right? So, oh, wow. um, so as an entrepreneur, as a manufacturer, B2B space, first off, you're not alone. You're not in a silo. There are tons of incredible resources that you can lean on, number one. Number two, and just jump on LinkedIn. Jump on a website. You know, uh, I provide all sorts of uh, information. You guys have all sorts of information. There is so much free information out there. You know, you can contact the shopping carts. It, like you're saying, like, hey, if there's a... Uh, and a staff member or a team member out there, you know, contact Shopify, contact a WooCommerce expert, do your due diligence and go through those demos. Just like, you know, you guys, I've gone through your demo twice and it is mind blowing, you know, so there's, I don't want to say inexcusable, but there's a ton of information that you can gather. And again, if you're a corporate warrior or, you know, like you said, we're a little concerned about, you know, job, you know, the, putting out that risk. You can gather a lot of information. Find a company in your space, not necessarily a competitor, that's where you want to be. Have a conversation yeah. with them and then try to entice them to come in and talk to your team. So those are some of my tips for you as far as uh, moving the needle there. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, yeah, well, and also if you're looking to get B2B e-commerce, but especially if you're in the manufacturing world, then talk to Kurt. That's the, <laughs> absolutely. I would be, I would be connect honored. with him on LinkedIn, yep. <laughs> follow, I, follow what he's doing, go through some of his re, uh, resources and workshops. He's got tons of stuff out there. Yep. Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Um, what's the best way for people to find out more information about you and connect with you? Yeah. Um, if you go to a uh, letter B is in boy, B the number two le uh, letter B is in boy tail T A I L. So it's B to B tail little plan words for retail. So it's B to B tail. Dot com. If you go to my website, I have uh, five uh, free e-commerce resource guides for companies for B folks in a B two B space. No questions asked, uh, just a free resource guide. Um, I have a great book, Stop Being the Best Kept Secret. You can find that on Amazon. And of course, I'm all over LinkedIn. Uh, would love to connect you, with you. We offer free webinars every single Friday. 
Uh, for, uh, we have a gentleman today who's a sales guru. He has 370,000 followers on LinkedIn. He's a LinkedIn influencer. Wow. We have the founder of, uh, I don't like to curse, so uh, Big Blank Fans, Kerry Smith, the founder of Big Blank Fans. He is our speaker uh, first Friday in January. So I'm not sure when you're going to be launching this, but uh, we have some incredible speakers awesome. every Friday, 1.30 Eastern time. Join us for those webinars. And again, we want to get you moving forward on that e-commerce game. So that's where that's where you can find me, Joseph. Yeah. And find Kurt on LinkedIn. He's super active on there too. And yep. so definitely check him Absolutely. out. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, thanks again for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Joseph, privilege, man. Thank you. And guys, when you connect, please connect with Joseph. And when you connect with Joseph, little tip, make sure you say the word chickens. So I'm just, I'm going to leave everybody with that one. You're like, what does he talk about? You have to go to his LinkedIn profile. You have to connect with him and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But when you think Joseph, think chickens. So Joseph, God bless you and your family. What for beautiful kids. And thank you for your time today, man. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Kurt. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you for listening to this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to The Strategic Marketer wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you could do me a personal favor and hit five stars on the rating, you don't have to leave a full review, just hit five stars. It would really help me out. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of The Strategic Marketer.